Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. If you're a regular viewer or subscriber you know that I like to get out in the woods for a full day at least once a month and this is the August all dayer. You'll also know that rather than just come out into the woods and wander around aimlessly I like to try and tick things off. I like to try and come out with a list of things that I want to try for the first time or practice or revisit and this month is no exception at all. So in no particular order the things that I want to cover off this month, things that I want to try out this month. I'd like to try achieving a fire using birch bark scrapings however I want to try and use a piece of flint to scrape that birch bark and also flint and my ferro rod to achieve the spark. So I don't want to use my knife like I normally do. Once I've got that fire going, I'm actually going to be trialling out a gift that I was given from a friend of mine in the States. Hi Anthony. I want to try out a wood gas burning stove. Never used one before, uh, so I want to share my thoughts on using that. I also want to revisit the brown bag water filter system. I used it at the end of last year, beginning of this year, and whilst it worked, it took a very long time to filter. I actually had the, uh, the inventor and the, the manufacturer of that brown bag, Rupert, actually looked at that video on YouTube and, and suggested that I needed to do something different at the beginning of the filtering process. So I'm going to give that a whirl today. I'm just watching Willow swim in the, the, the only stinky muddy puddle that we've been able to find for miles around. She's managed to find it. So yeah, so flint and birch bark the wood burning stove, the brown bag filter. Once I've got a fire going I'd like to char some wood for the first time. I've charred lots of cloth in the past but never any wood. And finally to top it all off I have brought out some pre-prepared pancake mix and I'd like to try out my skillet that I got as a subscriber gift from a bushcraft magazine a little while ago. I'm mindful that the direct flame from a wood gas burning stove may not be ideal but I want to try it out and see how I get on. So, why don't you join me? Looks like this is going to be my spot for the day. First thing I want to get set up is this Ohuhu wood gas burning stove. Anthony, if you're watching this, a huge thank you for gifting this to me. Anthony is a friend of mine that I know through my, my real job, through my working life. Uh, he's based out in the States. I don't think either of us knew that we both had this shared interest in the outdoors until I started posting my videos to YouTube and he started resharing them and we started talking and when I went out to a conference out in the States a few months ago now he actually brought along a few, a few gifts for me one of which is this uh, brand new never used wood gas burning stove I think that's how you, I think that's the right word, wood gas burning stove let me give a bit of context before I go into actually setting this stove up I used to use stoves a lot when I was in the army. I've had hexamine stoves, I've had traditional gas stoves, pocket rockets, peak stoves, um, MSR, multi-fuel stoves. I've had, I've had a gambit of different stoves when I was in the army. When I started doing this bushcrafty thing, I wanted to move away from that. I wanted to be cooking on traditional log wood fires in the woods because that was bushcrafting right that was a sensible thing to do that's that's going back to your roots not using all this newfangled stove technology stuff and I, I still largely believe that but not as much as I used to do here in the UK we've had a lot of hot weather recently um, to such a degree that it would have been dangerous and foolish and very probably criminal to have been able to starting any of those open fires this is where something like a stove would have been clearly very, very useful. But I didn't want to just start using um, my traditional, or, or should I say my um, weathered peak stoves and MSR fuel stoves and pocket rockets and things like that. 
I wanted to try and still maintain some element of, um, of traditionalism around it and authenticity around it. And that's where I think this wood gas burner stove can do that because it is wood that you are burning. It is not fuel, it is not liquid fuel, it is not any form of gas, it's, it's wood that you are burning. They are also much safer, I believe, in these sort of the recent conditions we've had because they're much more contained. Everything should combust down to, to powder and ash, very little of it actually is on the floor whilst it is burning, it is elevated off the floor. So all in all, um, I am airing towards this type of stove in the right conditions. It's not exactly the right conditions today because we've had a hell of a downpour over the past week or so, week to 10 days, but I still want to come out and try this method whilst I'm out in the woods today. So enough of me prattling on, why don't I get the stove cracked open and why don't I start um, using it for the first time, building this wood gas burning stove fire. From what I can fathom out on my research on YouTube and, and other online resources, the best way of, of feeding or, or starting this fire is actually from the top down. We imagine most of the time, don't we, that we, we start a fire and it starts to smolder in the small flames and then we, we pour material on top of that and the fire grows upwards. What I'm led to believe, the way that this happens, is actually you put your sticks in here and you put them in vertically, so end on end if you like. Let me hold that up. You put them in like that and stand it up. And then you actually start your fire on the top and allow it to burn down. And that's why there are no feeding holes in here for you to feed any material in because apparently if you pack this tight enough with enough dry material and you start it in the correct way, it should actually burn for a very long time and give off a really, really good heat. That's the theory. That's what it says on YouTube. And of course, nothing on YouTube is wrong, is it? So I'm gonna give that a whirl now. I'm gonna pack this as tight as I can with dry thumb thickness or smaller sticks. And then I'm gonna start this whole principle or try out this principle of starting the fire from the top down. Let's see how I get on. You'll notice that I've actually laid this stove on its side. And the reason that I've done that is if it's upright in its you know, traditional usage position, I found it really, really difficult to get those first sticks stood up because clearly they had almost nothing to rest against. They kept falling over. So what I've done is, as you can see, I've laid it on its side and I'm placing the sticks in so that when I actually stand this up, once it's much fuller than it is, the sticks will self-support each other and then they will be in that upright end-on-end -end position that I talked about a few seconds ago. So I'm finding this a much quicker and easier way of filling it up. It's probably a third full now. I'll be very impressed if this burns for as long as the YouTube video suggests it will, get the dog's head out of the way, because it really didn't take a lot of time to collect the amount of twigs that I've collected here. It took 30 seconds to break off a few dead standing twigs slash branches and of course a three foot long branch. You can see the size of these that I'm placing in here goes a very long way. I've now been and got some very very fine pencil lead thickness pieces of silver birch twigs as being get away has been modelled there by Willow, she's dying to have a go in this stove. All she can see in there is lots of twigs that she likes to eat. Hopefully the presence of flames will put her off. So I'm gonna put these very, very fine pencil lead thickness twigs into there. And I see now what they mean by this principle of starting the fire upwards. There's my fuel. On top of that, I'm putting my kindling. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put my um, tinder, which will be the birch bark shape. <laughs> She agrees.
I've started a fire using birch bark shavings many times before. I've got a few videos in my fire starting playlist about it, but I've always used my knife to scrape the external bark off, to fluff it up, to get it into that, that dry powder like substance. I don't want to use the knife today, instead I actually want to use some flint that I've harvested. Um, I've got a lot of this at home, I've brought out the smallest slash sharpest piece that I can and I want to use it as an improvised knife edge because let's be perfectly honest, that's what they did in the olden days, right? Well, this is much harder than you'd think. I've, I've cut myself on the edge of flint so many times to think, wow, that's, that's razor sharp, that's like a knife edge. And it is, but clearly the way that that blade is normally angled on my knife is very different to the way that this is angled on this piece of flint that I'm using. So, let's see if we can get that in focus there. It's coming up, but it's, it's coming up very scrappily. It's not coming up in a nice dry form that it would if I was using my knife. But I'm going to persevere, I'm going to keep going with this. I may have to use several pieces of birch to get the same amount, but I'm certainly going to still keep trying using this piece of flint here and the birch bark to try and fluff it up into that powder-like substance. I have a small pile there. It's probably, yeah, it's probably the same amount that I would use if I was using my knife so I want to try and go with that now to see for the same amount of effort using the the flint in terms of gathering a pile of uh, shavings there can I still is it large enough are the pieces fine enough for me to be able to strike my ferro rod onto it using once again this piece of flint to elicit a flame Indeed, it seems it was, which is uh, which is wonderful. Good, there we go, perfect. I'm going to try and keep that going clumsy today. I'm going to try and keep that going on this tin lid here. Just move that out of the way. Bring the stove back into focus there. There we go. And let's now drop this. on top of those birch bark shavings, add more birch, on top of those birch twigs, let's add some more birch bark. There's that black smoke that's so typical of burning birch bark. And I just want to keep an eye on this now, I'm going to keep an eye on this so that I can be confident that it's not just the birch bark that's burning but that actually those pencil lead thickness twigs are burning as well and of course once they start to burn the plan is that those thicker pieces would start to burn then no different than a normal fire I guess you know you want to make sure that one size of fuel tinder kindling fuel is burning before you put the next pile on the only difference with this is it's all in there at the same time it's all in there at the beginning I'm not building the fire up once it's started, I'm building the fire before we start it. And that's the uncertainty for me about this.
smells great. I must admit, in my rush to get out of the house this morning, um, I forgot to actually bring anything to put in the pancake. So I've crumbled up a Snickers bar and I'm having a Snickers pancake. Let's see what it tastes like. I know what Snickers taste like. Let's see what the pancake tastes like. Yeah, it tastes just like pancake. Funny old thing that, isn't it? So very, very happy with that process. Really happy with the pancake at the end of it. There we go, Snickers and pancake. Really happy with that. Dead simple, I must admit, I did mix up the milk, flour, eggs at home, brought it out in a small bottle and poured it into there. What I'd like to do in the future is to actually bring out the dry ingredients, so the flour, powdered milk, powdered egg, add water to it and reconstitute it all in the field. Uh, much more uh, reminiscent, if you like, of, of a true expedition or a true trip out rather than mixing it at home and bringing it with you. But to be perfectly honest, what I wanted to achieve today was to test out the stove, test out cooking on the skillet. It's capable of making a, or the combination of them all, and my skills are capable of making a pancake. That's great. Next time I come out, then I'll switch up and, and add the variable of mixing out in the field. But for now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a Snickers pancake to attend to. As I said earlier on in the video, in the introduction, I've charred cloth many times and had some real success with that but I've never charred wood so what I've got here are several pieces of very very punky elder that I actually sourced earlier on in the week when I was out walking willow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break those down into manageable chunks I'm going to pop them into my fire kit which doubles as my charring tin I'm going to tuck into a second pancake and whilst I'm devouring that I'm going to pop the uh, the tin on the uh, the wood burner and char myself some wood for the future. For the eagle-eyed of you watching this thinking, it doesn't look like he's got a hole in that char cloth tin. You'd be absolutely right. He doesn't have a hole in that char cloth tin. If you look up in the top right hand corner of your screen now, you'll see a link to a previous video I've made where I explain why I don't have a hole in my char cloth tin. As I said earlier, I've never charred wood before, so this has been on probably the same amount of time that I would char cloth, which worries me a little bit because clearly there is far less bulk and mass to cloth. So I am worried a little bit whether or not this is fully charred, but uh, let's, let's do the grand unboxing and see what we've got inside. Ah, there we go. There's a few pieces. You can just notice there, there's still a little bit of, of just inspecting still see a little bit of the the natural wood color but by and large all of those are pretty much no 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 they're pretty much charred so I guess the acid test is now will they catch a spark let's find out There you can see, hopefully, that that caught a spark very quickly and is burning well. So another one ticked off, quite pleased with that. Quite a basic thing to do, charwood, and I've never actually done it. Never bothered trying before, so 
I'm pleased that on the first attempt I was able, watch your head out the way, I was able to achieve it. God, I'm going to go into the vets this afternoon with a, a charred dog's nose. There we can see. There's almost nothing left at the bottom of this burn now. Yes, if I blew hard onto it, I could probably get a few of those twigs to glow again, but there's no substantial heat coming from it whatsoever. So let's have a look then at the, um, the ash signature that it's left behind. Let's actually have a look at, at what this has left. That there that you can see in the centre of the screen, you'll have to look closely, that's the ash residue of that stove that's been burning wood for pretty much an hour. In fact, I think it's a shade over an hour by one or two minutes. That is all that's left. That to me is pretty remarkable when you consider that it was burning for an hour. It burnt long enough for me to cook two pancakes char some wood and I would have had plenty of time to also boil some water, made a drink, made a pasta dish or something like that and that is all that's left. You know it's it's not even a handful of ash that is left. So in terms of uh, from a fire management perspective, from a safety perspective, from a leave no trace perspective that's not bad going when you consider what a, a traditional open fire would have left behind. I'm not down on open fires, I'm still going to use them, they'll still probably be my preference but I have to say having never used this type of stove before that is a huge, for me, a huge tick in the box from a time saving perspective, a resource savings perspective and also a safety and leave no trace perspective. There we have it folks, another day in the woods sadly coming to an end. A good day though, enjoyed it. Um, everything that I set out to achieve that I was that was possible to achieve I did those of you with a good memory may recall me saying that I wanted to um, go over my brown bag filter technique and process unfortunately the water source that I normally use in these woods is no longer a water source it's just a hole in the ground even though we've had quite a lot of heavy rain in the past week to ten days clearly hasn't been enough yet to fill that water table up given the uh, the weeks and the months of very dry rain-free weather that we've had but not to worry I'll put that on the list for next time that I'm out all in all though really 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 enjoyed today that stove Anthony if you've got this far in the video if you've been watching this video Anthony if you've got this far in the video a huge thank you for giving that to me I really really appreciate it and I promise you if ever we're on the same continent in the woods the next pancake is on me okay thank you very much once again auntie really appreciate it enjoyed the rest of the day as well the stove was a knockout pancakes were lovely and um, the chow wood enjoyed um the, the buzz of that working didn't need to see you know i thought it would have needed to take much longer than the char cloth did but that didn't seem to be the case at all so really pleased that i've got the experience of doing that as well as always, if you're not yet a subscriber, please do click that button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you will become one. Thank you as always for watching. If you want to leave a comment then do so below either on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube. And once you finish watching this video, do me a favour, get outdoors, practice those skills and push your boundaries. See you in the next video. Cheers.